This is the green zone, where most of the fighting in Helmand province takes place. Oops. It's 25 past eight in the morning. We've been contacted three times so far. This will be the fourth. They've started getting more aggressive, as you can hear. And they're heading our way, apparently. As the fighting intensifies, two Scots with their Mastiffs are called in to provide extra fire support. Whoa. The men of two Scots have spotted a Taliban position. They immediately sight the enemy with one of their Javelin missiles. It has to be on target, as we're positioned between them and the Taliban. <laughs> it may sound so sad. I start laughing. I can assure you it's only from nerves. It's a direct hit. But it's only taken out one of several positions, and the enemy continue to fight. An Apache has been tasked to our area. The threat of its 30 cal machine gun and Hellfire missiles halt the Taliban attack. The Taliban icon chatter was, um, let's hide our weapons till the fly goes away, because they know they can't win against that. The Taliban are well aware of how long the Apache can stay with us due to its fuel reserves, and will resume the attack as soon as it's gone. We find the nearest compound to regroup and take on some water. With temperatures soaring into the mid-40s, it's a relief to find some shade. Because of the fear of heat exhaustion on both sides, there is a sort of unofficial truce not to fight during the hottest hours of the day. But just a couple of hours later, sentries have spotted movement. It seems the Taliban have broken the truce and are preparing to attack. Tom, give me a description of the, the Taliban you've seen. Roger. Tom, what's happening on the icon? Delta Company have picked up Taliban radio chatter. We've heard from the ICOM that we've drawn, drawn more enemy than we imagined. They've actually surrounded us in 180. They've also sent the special Taliban commander down to organise a battle against us. So, um, because we've heard of the ICOM, there's so many of them, everyone's feeling a little bit tense at the moment, including myself. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, one uh, a bit of ICOM chatter um, from a Taliban commander to uh, a bloke carrying a PKM. Uh, if he sees us, then he has uh, a freedom to open fire. Two's are out for knowledge of Major Nick Calder has a dilemma. The compound is compromised on three sides. But there's no guarantee that the Taliban are not lying in wait to the south of us. The base at Musakala, DC, is four kilometres away. And with no air cover, the longer we wait, the greater the chance of being overrun. Uh, zero Alpha, uh, a bit of a change of plan due to the uh, uh, ICOM channel and things like that. Um, we're going to move the company down south. Uh, the order of march will be 3 zero, followed by 2 zero, followed by 1 zero. We've got to get out fast. Nick decides to head south into the green zone using the maze as cover.
After 15 nerve-wracking minutes, the airwaves are suddenly busy with ICOM chatter. The Taliban realize we've slipped their net. We've outfoxed them. What we've done is because of the monumental force and the massive ambush that we walked into yesterday afternoon, we've bugged out around them and they're pissed off. So they just said, anybody you see, shoot.